there we go right okay so just um obviously um i'm Jane Green, I'm Director of Music Filio Academy, um, and I'm here today just to give you a few ideas for singing games. It's really aimed at Key Stage 2 children, um, but I'm sure there are a few ideas that you can use with younger children as well. Um, right, I have prepared some slides, um, which I'm not really going to go through, but I'll just show you those now, um, and then um, they'll be shared, um, or they'll be on the YouTube channel afterwards. Um, or shared with you. Um, so here we go. All right. So basically, um, I did a singing games back in October. It was part one, which was more useful for early years uh, children. So perhaps if you are early years or key stage one, you could perhaps take a look at that recording because you'll you might find that's a little bit more relevant. Um, Basically, um, the first slide is just saying how important singing is. Um, and it's something that everyone has got. Everyone has a voice. And um, because it's the instrument, you know, you're actually born with. So it's some, something that everybody can do. Um, so the games I'm going to be doing today um, basically develop lots of different skills in children. Um, I've got a couple of slides, just the benefit of singing games. Basically, as you know, early years children learn through structured play. So there's no reason why we can't do that in music as well. Um, so rather than giving, you know, formal instructions all the time, it's quite nice to play games and they, you know, they don't even know they're learning and they, they enjoy themselves while they're doing it. Um, so I've just put games, you know, that involve social, they, um, also involves social interaction. So if you're doing it as a whole class, maybe a circle game or something like that, um, they, they learn how to choose and choose partners. They're working together. They're learning to take turns. Um, they can be a leader or they can be led. Um, and, you know, they learn the discipline of, of doing that. Um, obviously, lots of games, um, and I'll show you a few today, actually develop sort of fine motor skills and, and also other um, physical development um, and coordination. So I've got just a, a bit of a list. Basically, um, if you can deliver a music program based on singing games, these are all the things that will be developed within the child. And this is really from early years all the way through um, to key stage two, even key stage three. Um, so you've got social skills. It's, you know, it's helping them form positive relationships with others because quite often we work in pairs in these games or as a whole class. Um, the discipline, like I say, of taking turns and waiting for your turn. Um, and it can basically increase their confidence and their creativity. Um, with any type of music, um, obviously listening is going to be a key skill that is developed, which obviously is is um, so important in all areas of learning, not not just music. So it will help in other areas as well. Um, spatial awareness, particularly with younger ones, um, it will help them develop, you know, that sense of awareness um, and memory and coordination, and it can help develop speech and a better understanding and use of language. So EAL children will benefit from these too. Um, right, I'll leave the rest of the slides. I've just put a few sort of top tips when you're teaching songs um, together. So I'll leave those for you to sort of read in your own time. Um, and my last slide basically goes through some of the songs and the games I'm gonna do today. So the first uh, slide uh, or the first song is um, uh, How Do You Do? And it basically is a game um, that you play in a circle. So I'm going to um, stop presenting here because I think you not probably need to see me um, properly. Um, it basically, you start by singing, How do you do? How do you do? I'm very pleased to meet you. I'm very pleased to meet you. What is your name? Okay, so that basically um, is a song that you can do with younger children and they can tell you their name. They can take it in turns in a circle. But there's another song called How Do You Do, which is slightly more tricky, which can be used for say, I've done this with year threes. Um, you could possibly do it with year twos as well. Um, um, so 
it goes, the song goes, how do you do? How are you? I am fine and dandy. Okay, then, um, so the, basically the beginning of that, you stand with your partner um, in a circle, but I suppose you could do this if you're just working one-to-one -one with a child. Um, you shake their hands, so you use your right hand shake, then a left hand shake, so it's, how do you do? How are you? And then you do a do -si do which is where you basically walk around your partner. So, I am fine and dandy. And then you move along. Now, this is where you, you would be doing it as part of a circle game. So it goes, move along, sing a song, fine as cotton candy. So it's move along. And as you're doing that, you're actually going to be walking in the direction you are facing. So if you imagine a circle of 30 children, so 15 pairs of children, but they're in pairs. So they're facing each other. So in this bit, when move along, you basically pass by that person and that person will go in that direction. You will go in that direction and you will then meet a new partner. Um, so it basically goes, move along, sing a song. And then you meet your new partner and you go, fine as cotton candy and you tap hands on candy so that's and basically you can go around the whole circle and it's a really nice way of saying hello to everyone in your class because you'll you'll gradually come back to the person you started with if you're that patient enough to do it all the way through so i'll just sing that once more all the way through um and you try and imagine it as a circle game so how do you do how are you I am fine and dandy. Then you move, move along, sing a song. So on sing a song, you're waving to your new partner you've met. And then fine as cotton candy. So that's the, that's the first song. Um, then the other, next song I've got is basically My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean, which I think most people know. It's a lovely folk song. Um, just goes, my Bonnie lies over the ocean. My Bonnie lies over the sea, etc. Um, and basically, this is just a movement song, and this is for individual children. Um, obviously, you can do it as a whole class. They can be sat at their desks, or they can be sat in a circle. Um, basically, you're just getting them to move on specific words. So to start with, you could say, right, every time we sing Bonnie, um, you're going to stand up. And then every time we sing Bonnie again, you're going to sit down. So it went something like this. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. My Bonnie lies over the sea. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. So bring back my Bonnie to me. Like that. Now, if you want to make it a little bit more interesting, <laughs> um, you can perhaps choose all the words beginning with a B. So, Bonnie and bring and back. <laughs> and this is where it gets quite sort of uh, frantic. So, just for example, my Bonnie lies over the ocean. My Bonnie lies over the sea. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. Now, bring back my Bonnie to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my body to me, to me. Bring back, bring back. Oh, bring back my body to me. And um, I mean, I've done that even with year five and six and they love it because it's, it's absolute chaos. <laughs> um, but it's, it gets them thinking um, about, you know, when to move and, and the song. So that's that one, which obviously can be done with individual students if you're working individually. Um, the next song I want to do is a song I, I only discovered actually a few weeks ago, which is a lovely song. It's a song from New Zealand. Um, and this is certainly something you can use probably from early years all the way through to year six, depending on how complicated you want to make the body percussion, because there are some body percussion patterns in it. It's called Epo Tai Tai, and it's a folk song from the Maori people of New Zealand. 
Um, okay, I'm just going to play a little bit for you. I'll just um, show it you. So, where is it? There we are. So, this is um, the beginning of Epo Itaitai. Um, I'm just going to come back so I can see you. Um, right, so that's basically the song, and it just keeps repeating. It's a really, really lovely song. But the whole point of this is that we add different um, body percussion sequences. So um, basically, the first one's really simple. So this is why you can use it with early years, because all they're doing in the first sequence, you're doing two knee taps, two hand claps, and four across the body um, shoulder taps. Um, so they're literally keeping the beat there. They're feeling the pulse. So it goes, Epo we die die hey, oh Epo we die die hey, Epo we die die Epo we took it took it Epo we took it took it hey. And it carries on like that. Now, as the song progresses, the um, sequences get a little bit more complicated. So. Um, the next one actually goes like this. It's basically left, right, left, right, clap. 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 So you then add that with the song. So I'm just going to um, go back to the song and try and find that section. I think it'll be coming up soon. <laughs> And so it goes on. <laughs> um, so that that's that's the second sequence. The more complicated there's a there's an ex what they call expert level, um, which is basically um, left right clap left right click left right left right click. So it's left right clap left right click left right left right click. And you know you can gradually practice that and then speed it up and then you can put it with a song. So it's Epo we tie tie hey oh epo we tie tie hey epo we tie tie epo we tucky tucky epo we tucky tucky hey okay um so that I mean year five and six is still find that quite difficult so um and particularly i mean to start with i would just get the children doing the body percussion and not worry too much about singing but it's a real skill to be able to sing that melody and then keep another sort of rhythm going in your body so that's really really good for coordination and all those sorts of things um so that was epo tai tai um the next one is actually a nursery rhyme. So I'm just going to come back, stop presenting for a minute, which I'm sure everyone will know. It's London Bridge is falling down. Um, so this is kind of linked with literacy in a little bit because um, we're thinking about the syllables in the song, in the words of the song. So the first thing I sort of ask the children to do, well, we sing it through. 
which I'm not going to do because I'm sure we know it. Um, but I, I, we sing the song through and then basically I ask them which words have one syllable and which words have two syllables. So they obviously come up with bridge, is, down for one syllable words and then falling and London, two syllable words. Um, and what the, the idea of this is to punctuate the song with either hand claps or knee taps. So after every one syllable word, we put a hand clap. And after every two syllable word, we put a knee tap. But it's got to be after the word. So I often liken it to with their writing, if they were going to use a comma, they wouldn't put the comma on top of the word, they put it after the word. Okay, if they use a full stop, they put it after the word, not sort of on top of one of the letters of the word. So that kind of helps them um, get their head around what I want them to do. Um, so um, this basically goes, if you put a clap after London, um, a clap after London. Sorry, I, I've got it the wrong way around. I put a clap after two syllable word and a knee tap after one syllable. So it's London Bridge. Sorry, London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. I was right the first time, sorry, I'm getting confused. So it's a knee tap after a two syllable word. Um, I don't know whether you want to have a go at doing that. It's actually a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> when I first learned this, I couldn't do it at all. So <laughs> shall we go? Ready, go. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. <laughs> Brilliant. And then you can obviously speed that up. So when they get really good, London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. <laughs> Brilliant. Looks like you're doing it. Great. Well done. Um, now, um, there is um, a more complicated version of this, which is certainly, I would say, year five, six level, um, maybe even lower key stage three. Um, it's where they work in partners. So they have to alternate each syllable between each other. So um, basically, if I had a partner, I, I, I sing learn and then my partner would sing done and because they finished the word they're the ones that have to punctuate it they have to add the add the knee tap and then i would be so it's london it bridge i don't know we could perhaps try and do this together <laughs> should we try okay let me see sorry i'm on my phone so it's a bit tricky that's all right no worries okay so um so i'll go learn done then bridge is for ling down for ling down for ling down London bridge is for ling down my fair Lay D. Where? Well done. <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? It's, it really gets you thinking. So you can see why, you know, that is definitely up a key stage too. Because it's not only about thinking where to punctuate, but it's also about keeping the melody, keeping the tune going. What I find is that children will start to say London Bridge because they're thinking so much about where to put the hand claps and the knee taps. They then start using their speaking voice. So that's something you know you can develop over time. Um, and they quite like performing that to each other in pairs. Um, so that's quite a cool one. Something to watch out for though is when they when they do it in pairs, they quite often want to put the knee tap actually on the word. So try and make sure that you know that they're they're punctuating the song each word rather than with the word. 
I yeah, get... I did that a couple of times, so yeah, I can no, understand. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's it's easily done. You did very well, though. The first time I did it, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Oh, thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, okay, so I've got another song now. Um, it's called Bim Bom, and again, this is something you can do as an individual, or it's something you can do as a circle game with your class. Um, I think, yeah, this could probably be used um probably year two upwards i would probably keep it till key stage two though but it goes like this i'm not sure what it means but it's a cool song it goes bim bom biri biri bom biri biri bim bom biri biri bom bim bom biri bim bom biri bim bom biri biri bom bim bom biri bim Bom, beery, bim, bom, beery, beery, bom. Okay, so that's the song. Um, I don't know whether you want to have a go at singing it or do you want me just to carry on? If you don't mind carrying on because that would take a few goes to get it. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. So um, basically, once you've taught the song, and I would teach it, obviously, line at a time, so it would be something like bim, bom, beery, beery, bom. Then they'll sing bim, bom. Beery, beery, bom. Then beery, beery, bim, bom. Beery, beery, bom. Beery, beery, bim, bom. Etc. Etc. Um, so yeah, once they've got the song, then you can add um, some different movements. Um, now the first thing I ask is, what do you think if this music was actually written out in front of you? What do you think there would be in the music in between bim and bom? So bim. Bom, beery, beery, bom. So what is it? And they, they'll say, oh, an arrest or a silent beat, which is what it is. Um, so in every single rest, we're going to actually put a clap. And I've done this on a djembe drum as well. So rather than, you know, just using, a, um, you can get instruments out or any sort of percussion instruments. It doesn't have to be djembes. could be tambourine, a maraca. Um, so... It would just be something like this. In fact, I've got, I've got a tambourine. So let's let's so it'll be bim bom beery beery bom beery beery bim bom beery beery bom bim bom beery bim bom beery bim bom beery beery bom bim bom beery bim bom beery bim bom beery beery bom. So obviously at the end, there's the three silent beats there rather than just the one. Um, so once I've got that, this is where the movement comes in. And I always say I've been practicing my best robotic moves. <laughs> so, um, and they all start laughing at me. Um, but basically um, what you can get them to do is just all stand one end of the room and in every rest, they are gonna make a movement. And I, I go for, let's be robots or we can be whatever you want but robots i use robots so you basically go bim bom beery beery bom beery beery bim bom beery beery bom bim bom beery bim bom beery bim bom beery beery bom bim bom beery bim bom beery bim bom beery beery bom and but that is, it's, it's actually a lot harder than it looks um, because what the children want to do, they always want to move on the strong beat. And what they're actually doing is moving on, on the off beat. So they'll want to go bim like that rather than bim, bum, bim. So that's um, one to look out for there. Do you want to have a go at doing that or should we, do you want to move on? Up to you. I was going to say that probably won't be suitable for what uh, I needed for. Thank no, you, okay. though. That's all right. No problem. Um, just so other class teachers know, um, you can play this as a whole um, class game. Um, you all stand in a circle and you choose somebody to go into the middle of the circle with a ball. Um, and what they do is basically, rather than move this time, they're actually throwing the ball in the rest and they're throwing it in turn, say maybe clockwise around the circle. So it'll be, if I was the person in the circle, um, and the screen is the person I'm throwing to, it'll be bim, throw, bomb, 
Back to me. Beery, beery, bum. Beery, beery, bim, bum. Beery, beery, bum. Bim, bum, beery, bim. Bom, beery, bim, bom, beery, beery, bom, throw, throw, throw. That's where it gets a little bit crazy <laughs> um, because it obviously relies on children being able to catch, which a lot of them can't. So, but it's it's all good, um, you know. Obviously, for many re different reasons. Um, so that's what you can do with that if you've got a whole class that rather than an individual. Right. Um, next one. I think you'll probably be able to do this if you're, if you're one-to-one. -one. Um, it's actually a cup game. So I don't know whether you've got anything handy. Um, just, no? Okay, but not to worry. You can just watch. <laughs> um, I'm going to see. I'm going to try and so you can see my cups. <clears throat> I mean, it could be. It doesn't have to be a cup. Um, it could be. How many do I need? There's two. Two. There's two. Can I use two lids? Yeah, They're yeah, like, that's fine. Yeah. Any, I was going to say, like, I've got a shaky egg here or maybe two pebbles or anything like that. Um, so let me see. I'm. You're just, can you see my cuts okay there? Yes. Yep, fabulous. So this is called um, Go Round the Mountain. <clears throat> really simple song. It goes, go round the mountain to, I, sorry, to I diddle um, to I diddle um, go round the mountain, to I diddle um day. Okay, so that's the song. And basically you're going to go one, so you tap your cups or whatever you've got on one, one, then you in a clockwise direction, you put them like that. So it's, so it's one, two, then three, Four. So basically, you're moving your cups around, if that makes sense. So it's go down the mountain. Yeah, got it. Yeah. And then so, and then we go to die diddle lum, to die diddle lum. That's it. So you're clapping the rhythm of of the words. So to okay. I diddle lum, to I diddle lum. That's it. Okay. Great. And then next week, go round the mountain. Now, this is where it's... the mountain. Oh, goodness, this is tricky. <laughs> and it goes to I, and then we alternate the cups this time. So, to I diddle dum day, and then you turn the cups up. Do I diddle dum day? day. Yeah, that's it. That's why it probably works better with cups because you can see yeah. <laughs> when they're upside down and when they're the right way up. And then we then the song goes all change direction to I diddle um to I diddle um all change direction all change direction to I diddle um day. So you probably guessed instead of moving your cups in an, in a clockwise direction, you're going to move them back in an anti-clockwise direction. So all change direction. Two. This is the same as the beginning. Two. I diddle um. Then it's all change direction. Two. I diddle um. That's quite fun. <laughs> So, yeah, so you're back to where you started. So if you like, what I'll do, I'll just perform it once so you can see okay. without any interruptions, just so you've got it on the recording if, if you need it. So hopefully I'll get it right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, go round the mountain, to I diddle lum, to I diddle lum, go round the mountain, to I diddle lum day. All change direction. Do I diddle lum? Do I diddle lum? All change direction. Do I diddle lum day? Phew, got it right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that, that's that one. It, it's quite nice, and particularly if you're working with individual children. Um, but again, a class could do this as long as they've got something they can hold. You could ask them to bring a couple of little pebbles in or something and, and do that as a class. Um, Keep your cups or whatever you've got there because the next song is a cup 
game as well. It's probably a song you'll know. Um, it's called Little Liza Jane. So, um, do you think not you know it or not? Okay. I'll have to wait to hear it. <laughs> it goes. I know a girl that you don't know, little Liza Jane. Way down south in Baltimore, little Liza Jane. Oh, Eliza, little Liza Jane. Oh, Eliza, little Liza Jane. Have you heard the tune? You might have heard the tune, possibly. No, Not sure. No. Yeah, okay. no. <laughs> Um, right, so basically, um, this is another cup game. Um, this one, um, again, works on a sort of individual level, but again, you could do it with your class. So, um, I've got to think now. Uh, right, so it's, um, I know a girl that you, sorry, so, so it goes, you tap basically your left cup with your left hand. Okay, so it's one, then you clamp, and then you click, and then you clap. So it's one, two, sorry, you can't see my cups now. So one, clap, click, clap. One, two, three, four, yeah? That's the first bit. So it's one, two, three, four, and then you tap, using your left hand, you tap your right cup then, one, two, three, four. So the pattern is this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Do you want to try that? Ready, off we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Fabulous. And then that goes with the song. So it goes, I know a girl that you don't know, little Liza Jane, way down south in Baltimore. Line the name. Got it? It's quite fast, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, you don't have to sing it. You can speed that up. That's obviously up to up to speed, up to tempo. But um, so, but you could do it. I know a girl that you don't know. Delight the train. Only down south in Baltimore. Little eyes the train. Brilliant. Then the next bit, you need this clapping pattern. So it goes one, two, three. So you get clap, click, click. Then you have a clap and a click. And then another clap, click, click. So it's three chunks, if you like. The first chunk is a chunk of three, clap, click, click. The second chunk is a clap and a click. And the final chunk is a clap, click, click again. So if you do that up to speed, you get clap, click, click, clap, click, clap, click, click. Yeah? <laughs> so it's one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Yeah, got it? One, yeah. two, three, one, two, one, two, three. Fabulous. Brilliant. So basically, then all you do is, <clears throat> oh, Eliza. That's what you do on I that. You're pointing to club twice. I know it's hard. <laughs> isn't it? um, so, oh, Eliza, and then the little Eliza Jane. You go back to what we did before. Little Eliza Jane, oh, Eliza, little Eliza Jane. <laughs> I think I need to learn the song first. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so. If I, I'll, I'll just do it all the way through so you can see um, see how it goes. So it goes like this. <clears throat> I know a girl that, sorry, you can't see my cups now. I know a girl that you don't know, little Liza Jane, way down south in Baltimore, little Liza Jane. Oh, Eliza, little Liza Jane. Oh, Eliza, little Eliza Jane. And that's it. That's <laughs> Again, I, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably one for upper key stage two. Poss uh, although I don't know. I don't know. You could, uh, I don't know whether it'd be suitable. What, what age is the person child you work with? 
It's year two, but the child is really good with um, beats. Yes. So I yeah. would have to learn the song. It'd start off yeah. slow, but I reckon they could actually get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Okay, lovely. So that's that game. I've just got two more if you're all right. Are you still yeah. okay? To yeah. Um, I don't know whether these are going to be much use, but I'm t t if you're working with individual children, this is the next one is a song called Obwisana, and it's a stick tapping game, and it's from Africa. I've got a feeling it comes from Ghana, but don't quote me on that. Um, um, basically, the children sit in a circle, and um, they have a pair of claves each. They could use chopsticks. That's a sort of cheap alternative. It works just as well. Um, so, um, basically, the song goes like this. It's really easy, the song. It goes, Obwisana sa, Obwisana sa, Obwisana sa, Obwisana sa. So it's Obwisana sa, <laughs> basically. You don't need to know many lyrics. Um, I often ask them um, at the end of the first phrase, what is the difference between the end of the first phrase and the, um, the the final phrase? And the first phrase obviously goes up in pitch. It goes, Obwisana sa, Obwisana sa. Whereas at the end, it goes down in pitch. Obwisana sa, Obwisana sa. So that, that's, hopefully they'll point that out. Um, okay. Now, um, you then basically, I ask them, their claves or their chopsticks we normally sat cross-legged on the floor for this there's a reason for that um, um, because if ever their legs out straight we won't be able to do the stick passing which is what this game is all about so um, we're sat cross-legged and I asked them to put their claves or chopsticks in front of them like a knife and fork imagine they've got their favorite I don't know plate of food in front of them and their claves are either side of that plate of food so there you know there's a space between them so about it like that um let me just show this is going to be tricky because i'm going to show can you see my table yeah yeah so basically the, what you have to do is one you tap the ground on one so one two three four so it's basically let me show you up in the air i'm tapping the table on one one two three four and tap the table on four so it's the table is the ground, obviously, the floor normally. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Brilliant. And then we put that with the song. So it goes, Obwisana sa, Obwisana sa. Okay. Okay. Lovely. Right. So that's that, that's something they can do to start with, but then the fun starts. This is where we start to pass the sticks. So I normally get them to with I, I often do it in a clockwise direction to start with, because it for some reason we like clockwise a lot more than anti-clockwise. Our bodies like it. Um so um Basically, I get them to tap the person that is sat to the left of them, um, which often half of them don't know their left from their right. So that's the first <laughs> option. Um, but once we've established who we're passing to, um, then basically I get them to watch me and I, I say, watch what I do. So I do, Obwisana sa and pass. So basically okay. I sort of, across the person on to the left of me and place my sticks in front of them because their sticks will have gone to the person to the left of them so there will okay. be a space yeah so and then hopefully the person sat to the right of me will have passed me their sticks um and to begin with we do it at the end of every phrase so basically we go and pass and then you pick up your new sticks and pass okay could you use so. this with sharing for example if you you did it and then you passed it in front of you and then that person had a go and then they passed it back yes. to you 
Yeah, that's lovely. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's nice. Yeah, definitely, that would work. Fantastic. I'll add that one to my list. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, like you, Sandra, you know, you, if you're working with an individual, that that would definitely be something you could do. Um, now, obviously. Um, you can change where the phrasing is. So this gets them used to sort of different phrasing lengths. Um, so um, that was obviously the first big phrase. That was eight beats in total. It, oh, boy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you're passing on eight. If you want to make it a little bit more dynamic, um, you can pass after every, on, on four. So basically, you're shortening the phrases. So it's one, two, three, and pass. One, two, three, and pass. Oh, we saw a saw and pass. Oh, we saw a saw and pass. And that is quite difficult because yeah. obviously, one of the things that I, I try and get them to do is I say, why am I doing that? And I physically like really deliberately place them like a knife and fork in front of the person sat next to me because a lot of them will just sort of roll them along the floor or throw them um and if you do that you get children sort of grappling for the clays because they're all going yeah. all over the place so um that's something that will happen um yeah so that's that's basically that i mean oh we sun a sun plus um that's so you can do it in eight beat chunks or in four beat chunks um, but it's really nice, actually, if you do ever manage to do it as part of a class, um, it's really nice to watch um, because it, everyone's doing that together. It's like sort of synchronised swimming, but yeah. um, stick tapping. So, yeah. Um, and then the last one is um, a game called I Like Coffee, I Like Tea. In fact, you could probably do this, um, again, as a shared thing in a pair. Um, it's a pulse game. So it reinforces, you know, them feeling the beat. Um, and it's really simple. It goes, I like, let me take the ball out of the way for a minute. So it goes, I like coffee, I like tea. Can you catch the ball from me? Okay. Um, so we just sing that with that body percussion. And um, in a class, basically, you'd be stood in a circle and there's the leader in the middle. Um, with the ball. So while the class are singing, I like coffee, I like tea, the person in the middle should be bouncing the ball. But what I want to try and get them to do is bounce the ball in time with the beat. So we talk about, can you find, you know, the slow beat? So it's, I like coffee, I like tea, can you catch the ball from me? And what I want them to do is actually the person that's to bounce the ball. So it's, I like coffee, I like tea. Can you catch the ball from me? So that's the slow beat. Um, if they want to, they could find the, I like coffee, I like tea. So they're bouncing the ball a little bit faster. I like coffee, I like tea. Can you catch the ball from me? That is, I mean, again, this is, I, I've done this with year three, um, but obviously it, it depends on their, their ball catching skills, but it's, it's all good things to develop. Um, yeah. And you probably find that most of them are bouncing it in time with the beat, but it, it doesn't matter. It's something they can work on. And then when we get to that, when we, and then we get to, I like tea, can you catch the ball from me? Then we actually go into our speaking voices. We go one, two, three, change places. Four, five, six, change places. Seven, eight, nine, change places. Ten, let's start again. Clap, clap. So that's, that's okay. fairly straightforward. Um, now, this is where basically the person in the middle on the one, two, three, change places. What they do is they need to just choose somebody they're starting with. They would throw the ball to the person on in the, you know, in stood in the ring or in a circle on one. So it goes one and that person catches it and that person then throws it back on two to the person in the middle again. So it's one two it comes back to me and then on three you're 
you're passing it to the person next to the first person you yeah so you're, you're okay. basically going around circle in order so it's one two three change places like the change places is basically the person who was the leader has to change places the person that has just caught the ball um and okay. you basically carry that on so it's one two three change places and then you get a new leader four five comes back to me six change places so another person changed places then we have seven eight nine change places and then ten that's a quick turnaround the next person ten let's start again so number ten whoever it is who's who lands on number ten they're going to be the new leader so okay. they're the one that goes i like coffee i like tea can you catch the ball from me and then we basically carry on from where we left off so wherever number 10 was stood we carry on from there so one two three change places does that make sense is it it's yeah. hard to understand if you don't see it but um but i was thinking you know maybe you could you could do something similar couldn't you go one two three and then sort of swap places swap around yes yeah, and that would involve, you know, sort of it's it's basically internalizing the beat, feeling the beat. I mean, it was, you're singing, your body percussion, and it's obviously ball catching skills as well. So there's lots going on there. Um, so that might be something you could do. Hopefully, I was thinking um, of maybe just starting with the um, "I like coffee, I like tea," yeah. and then just practicing the bouncing, yeah, yeah and definitely. then move on to throwing afterwards. Yeah, no, that that's that sounds like a good plan. Yeah, definitely. Great. Well, that that's sort of that's my last song because that's sort of almost the hour. So I don't know whether you've got any questions or anything that you want to ask. Or no, that was all really great ideas. I'm really glad I joined. <laughs> great. great. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's brilliant. And thank you for joining. <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you, Sandra. Bye. Bye.